Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome to this video for Key Stage 2 Maths Understanding Algebra. And in this video I'm going to teach you some basic information that you will need to know in order to understand algebra. So make sure that you have a piece of paper and a pen and take some notes as I go through this video. Now before I continue on with some practice questions and some examples, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you will get kept up to date with some of my upcoming Key Stage 2 videos and this will really help you to prepare for your mass assessments for Key Stage 2. And if you want some more practice questions, these superhero characters such as Lolita are found in our How to Become Mass Key Stage 2 books which I will give you the direct link below this video so make sure that you check that out because there's loads more practice questions that you can um, practice before your SATs exams. Okay so algebra, so instead of using numbers to solve math problems sometimes you will be given letters and or symbols to work out a mathematical equation and this is known as algebra. So okay so let's write out the first 10 digits so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now, instead of using numbers, these could be represented using letters. So, 1 could be A, 2 could be B, 3 could be C, and so forth. So, you could have a question like so. So, we've got 3C plus D. So, using this um, information here, you will need to understand what C is referring to and D, and then work that out like so. So step one, so 3C is actually referring to 3 times and then C. So C is 3, so 3 times 3. Now remember, if you have a number and a letter right next to each other, there's a time sign in between these. So you basically times in 3 by C. So 3 times 3, and then you're plus in the D. So D equals 4. So we've got 3 times 3, so 3, 6, 9 plus the 4, which is equivalent to D, gives you 13. So see how simple that is. Instead of using numbers, we've used letters to show a different way of solving math equations. So let's have a look at another example. So 7B divided by B. So this, the B is representing 2. So 7 times 2 divided by B again, which is 2. So we've got 7 times 2 is 14 divided by b, which is 2, gives you 7. So question 3, so 9c times e, so we've got 9 times c, which is 3, times e, which is 5, so we've got 9 times 3, which is 27, times by the 5, would give you 135. So this is very basic algebra, but you will really need to know this in order to improve your algebra algebra skills okay so using symbols so sometimes a symbol will be used to represent a number so we've got 7 plus a star equals 15 so you need to work out what the star is representing so the star represents a number so you need to work out what that number is so if 7 plus the star is 15 that means 15 minus the 7 will give you the number here so 15 minus 7 is 8 so because the equation is an addition, in order to work out the value of the star, you would need to do the opposite operation, and in this case it would be subtraction. So seven, uh, 15 sorry, minus 7 will give you 8. And you can double check this and factor this number into the equation. So 7 plus 8 is 15. So you know that you can check your answer by putting that number into the equation. So basic shape formulas. So when it comes to working out shape measurements, using formula is a great way to understand things in a simpler way. So here we've got perimeter of a square. So P is the perimeter equals 4 times L, which is the length. So we've got perimeter. And in order to work out the perimeter, you would add all of the sides of the shape. So we've got L times uh, L plus L plus L plus L. So if each length of the square was 8 centimetres, then the perimeter of this square would be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, which would give you 32. And if you was working out the area of the square, you would do the area times the base. So A times B equals 
um, a times h, sorry, for the height will give you your area. So if each length of the square was 10 centimetres, then the area of the square would be 10 times 10, which would give you 100. And finally, for area of a triangle, so you would have a for area equals the half height times base. So if the height of the triangle was 8 and the base of the triangle was 4, so you would do 8 times 4 is 32 and then divide that by 2 because 8 times 4 is 32 but that's working out a whole entire square so you would need to divide that by 2 which would give you 16. Okay, substituting numbers. So when it comes to working out shape measurements, using formulas is a great way to understand things in a simpler way like I've just said. So work out 3x plus 4y when x equals 4 and y equals 2. So you're already given the values of what x and y are. So now you just need to do the calculation. So rem remember, when you have a number in front of a letter, that means you must multiply that number by the value of the letter. So if x equals 4, so 3 times 4 would give you 12. And if y equals 2, so you would have 4 times 2 would give you 8. And then you would add these together because it's an addition calculate, uh, calculation. So it would be 12 plus 8 equals 20. So the correct answer is 20. So forming expressions. So remember expressions are just lines of algebra that contain letters. So whilst you may not be asked to form an expression yourself, understanding how to do so will greatly improve your understanding of using expressions and what they represent. So example, Freddie goes to practice three times a week and it costs X amount of pounds. Freddie is also part of an ice hockey team which he attends twice a week which costs Y amount of pounds. Okay, so if you're working out the cost of how much it would be all together, for this question you're working out the expression which demonstrates the total cost spent on Freddie's weekly activities. So Freddie plays football three times a week and this can be represented as follows. So 3X, so X is the amount it costs and 3 is the number of times he plays. So Freddie attends ice hockey practice two times a week and this can be represented as follows. So 2y, so y is the amount it costs and 2 is the number of times he attends. Therefore the expression could be written as 3x plus 2y and that would give you the expression for the total cost per week. So simplifying expressions. So in order to simplify equations and expressions we need to rearrange the terms so that all the letters are on one side of the equation but all the numbers are on the other side. So to simplify equations and expressions, so we need to collect together like terms. Now like terms are basically another way of describing the same terms, i.e. collecting all the x terms or collecting all the numbers. So simplifying the following expressions, we have 5x plus 9x minus 3 minus 2x plus 7. So first you need to break up the equation. Remember the operations in the equation will remain on the left side, so here is a demonstration of how you would break it up. So you've got 5x plus 9x. You would group the plus with the 9x. Minus 3 minus 2x plus 7. So you want to group the numbers together and then group the letters together. So we've got 5x plus 9x minus 3 minus 2x plus 7. So let's work out the x's. So we've got 5x plus 9x and then minus 2x would give you 12x. And then work out the numbers. You'd have minus 3 plus 7, which would give you 4. So the correct answer would be 12x plus 4. So this is the expression, and you've simplified this here, okay? So sequences. So when it comes to numbers and sequences, there is a simple rule that you can use to work out the number in any sequence. So the rule for any number sequence is to find the next term, i.e. the next number in a pattern sequence, you can use algebra and use the term n in order to represent the number you're trying to find. So find the hundredth term in the following sequence. We've got 4, 11, 18, 25, 32. So these are your first five terms of the sequence. As you can see, you're adding 7 each time. So the rule for this sequence is 7n because n is the number that you're trying to find. However, the first term, 4, is too small for this rule to work so therefore the rule needs to be changed to the following so 7n minus 3 and this applies to all of them 
So you need to make sure that it applies to the first term because the first term will be a smaller number. So check that this new rule works for the sequence. So let's take the fourth term for example. So we've got 4 times n because it's plus 7 each time. So 4 times 7 equals 28 minus the 3 gives you 25. Now that you know that this rule does work, let's find the hundredth term, okay? So 100 times 7 would give you 700, minus the 3 would give you 697. Okay, so that completes it for this video, and hopefully you have some idea of how to work out algebra questions. Now, don't forget, like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you check out the link below because it does link to some really great products to help you with different areas of your key stage 2 maths. For more practice questions, click on the link below and I really hope this video has helped you prepare for your key stage 2 maths. If you do have any questions or queries, drop me a message below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I wish you all the very best of luck.